fired. All right, we are halfway through the year now. It is July 2024, and that means on this episode, we're going to be talking about July 1994. It's a pretty light month for music, um, especially in, in my world, but you know what? We're going to make the best of it. So let's just jump right into the number one albums for July 1994. For the first two weeks in July, the number one album in the country was Purple from Stone Temple Pilots. And that's pretty great because I believe it was number one a week last month. Is that three weeks total? That's, I believe, more than Nirvana or Pearl Jam or any of those bands stayed at number one. And well deserved because it's a fucking great album. But for the rest of the month of July 1994. Unfortunately, the number one album in the country was the Lion King soundtrack. Now, on one hand, I kind of get it. It's Elton John. He, he was already of legendary status in 1994, but I can't imagine having a good time hanging out with anybody that's like, you, you know what we should listen to? The Lion King soundtrack. That, to me, sounds like the kind of thing somebody says when they're a, a week away from joining a cult. And what a nice segue. Let's move right over to the top movies of July 1994. That's right, let's just get this out of the way. The number one movie in the country for the first week of July 1994 was The Lion King. Now, this was one of those months where there were five Fridays, and so there's five number one movies, but uh, the all the rest listed are ones that I saw in the theater. Hold on. Nope. I tell a lie. <laughs> I did not see this movie in the theater. I've just seen it so many times since that it feels like I did. The, uh, for the second week of July, the number one movie in the country was Forrest Gump. Yeah, I remember when it came out. I, the, the trailer just didn't do anything for me, so I, I didn't actually go to the theater to see it. But I've seen it many times since then, and I think it's a great movie. Can I get a Jenny Sucks? All right, thank you. All right, all right, now we're talking. I saw this movie in the theater, still love it today. Uh, the third week of July, the number one movie in America was True Lies with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jamie Lee Curtis and Tia Carrere as a baddie. There are a handful of movies from the late 80s, early 90s that I loved back then that I watch today and I still watch it and go, this is just a fucking great movie. And I know I'm probably in the minority when it comes to moviegoers here, but with the strength of a movie like that and before it Terminator 2 and before it Aliens, can we just somehow get James Cameron back to making good movies? And no, I have not seen Avatar I, I, because I have not had the flu in a long time. But guess what? For the fourth week of July 1994, guess who's back? Forrest Gump, back in the number one position. Ma makes total sense to me because Forrest Gump to me is one of the most... I know it's a weird phrase that people say, but utterly watchable movies. And that mean, I, and to me, that means like you're you're at home like doing nothing, and it's just randomly on TV, and you are going to sit down and watch the rest of the movie. It's just the, to me, it's just that entertaining. I don't know. What do you think? You know what I think? I think you should go home to Greenbow, Alabama. All right, and for the fifth and final weekend of July 1994, a movie that I did see in the theater and I have not seen since, The Mask, starring Jim Carrey. And I, I haven't seen it since just because I remember in 1994, I was a big Jim Carrey fan, as a lot of people were, and there was a lot of hype around The Mask. And 
I, I just, I think it was the exact opposite of the Forrest Gump thing, where I saw the trailer for The Mask and went, oh, can't wait to see this. And I remember, I, well, I was 16 years old at the time, I remember leaving the theater and being like, I really wasn't that great. And so I've just never watched it again. I know there's a lot of fans of The Mask out there. Um, maybe one day, I'll, I'll, you know, after I watch Avatar, I'll, <laughs> I'll watch The Mask again. All right, now for the album releases of July 1994. Not a lot to talk about. This first one sparked a lot of memories for me because I remember buying it at the time. July 5th, the compilation DGC Rarities Volume 1 was released. And like many people, the reason that I bought that was because there was an unreleased Nirvana song on it that once I got the CD, I quickly learned that it was just a demo for Stay Away called Pay to Play. But I'm pretty sure that the DGC Rarities compilation was the first time I heard Weezer, which their song Jamie is on there. And then I think it was based on that that I went and bought the first Weezer album. But it also has Hole and Back and Sonic Youth and Counting Crows. It's I don't remember it being an amazing compilation, but then again, I also have not listened to it in a very long time. But it is one that really screams, you know, 1994 to me. It's just a product of its time. So it holds that little bit of nostalgia for me. All right, moving all the way to the 19th of July, 1994. The fifth album from No Effects, Punk in Drublick. This was the first No Effects album that I ever heard. And funny enough, like I had a lot of friends that had gotten into No Effects and I heard this album and I went, it's not really that great. Even today, I like the album a lot now, but it is very front-loaded with the killer shit. But yeah, it wasn't until I went back and heard White Trash Do Heaps and a Bean that I became a No Effects fan, and then I got more into this album. I think a good number of people consider this the best No Effects album. I, w I wouldn't agree with that. But I mean, it's definitely got a lot of bangers, and I, th I think at this point, I'm okay with considering it a, a classic No Effects album. I think it was this album, though, where it was big enough to where all of a sudden MTV and record labels were, were bugging No Effects and Fat Mike to like sign them and get them to do shit. And at that point, Fat Mike had already started Fat Records, and this was on Epitaph, which was a label that was doing, it was indie label, but doing really well on its own. So they said, fuck you. Like, why do we need you? Um, and that's, that's what makes it punk rock. The, the more relaxed you are, that's what makes it hip hop. All right, also released on August, shit. Also released on July 19th, the soundtrack for a movie that wouldn't be released until about a month later, uh, the Airheads soundtrack. Now really, this is a pretty fucking badass soundtrack. I don't know if you wanna like pause that for a second and look at everybody that's on it. Motorhead with Ice T and Whitfield Crane, White Zombie, Primus, Anthrax, Candlebox, Prong, Stick. Because if you've watched my bands, you should know on Stick, they, they are also on this. And of course, the classic Degenerated by the Lone Rangers, featuring the vocals of Brendan Fraser. I'll talk about the movie more next month, but I'm guessing because of you know the strength of the soundtrack and, you know, I guess maybe they thought the movie was going to do really well, because you could even order, can you see that? You could order a t-shirt from the movie. I'm assuming they didn't sell many of these t-shirts, so does anybody know... It is any who, <laughs> what company? Who do I go to? Where is the where are the boxes of the, the Airhead shirts so I can get one? Does anybody know anyone that has one? Because I would like one. If you haven't heard this soundtrack, I, I suggest finding it. I don't know where to, you can go to eBay or something, but it is a super enjoyable soundtrack in my opinion. Um, Airheads. So that's all I've got for July 1994, but who wants to go back another 10 years? All right, so I, I think I mentioned this in an, another episode where like there's uh, there are albums that are noteworthy and other people would probably like to talk about that came out in 1984, but it, at the time I, I was six years old, I, I wasn't listening to a lot of music and there's a, there's a lot of albums from that time that I, I look at them and I go, ah, that album came out then. But then I have no desire to talk about that album. But there is one very, very, very important album that came out on July 27th, 1980. 
1984. My favorite album of all time, Ride the Lightning. Okay, I'm not going to... That's all we're... That's all... Good night. <laughs> I feel like I've talked about... I just did an episode, if you didn't catch it, The House Fire 25, where I'm talking about items from my collection that I would save if there, my house was on fire. And, I, and I, this was the first one I talked about. And not only that, I've talked about this album at least a couple dozen times in all sorts of different videos and I have nothing new to say. I didn't hear this when it came out. A six-year-old old head, young head, did not know who Metallica were, but once I heard this album, it became one of my favorites and over the years it has grown to be my favorite album of all time. I think it's perfect, even Escape. Can we normalize shaming people that still talk shit about Escape? I'm including James Hetfield in that because it's a fucking great song. And it, and it goes so well in the fucking track list. I love every song on this album and the way that it flows. If you take Escaped out, it's not the same album and it prop well, it might still be my favorite, but what song do you put in? Do you just make it a seven track? It's a shorter round. No, something's gotta go there. Plus Trapped Under Ice into Creeping Death. That doesn't, that's, that's not a good, that's not a good album flow. That's two fast ones right next to each other. Escape is so perfect in between those two songs. I has anybody seen that meme of like the little girl and she's at the dinner table and she goes like this? That's me when anybody uh, talks shit about escape. All right, night, <laughs> July twenty seventh, nineteen eighty four. Uh, Ride the lightning, my favorite album of all time. All right, we're done with another month. We have five months left in. 1994 2024 remembering all the nostalgia bullshit thank you very much for continuing to support my shit watch my shit um i appreciate all the comments the likes go to oldheadnetwork.com and sign up so you get some updates for some things that i got going on go listen to old head radio is there anything else that i need to ask you guys to do um no no just be kind to people and don't be an asshole Thanks for watching. I'll see you all again very soon.